हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू आवर चैनल फिजिक्स गैलरी आशा बिनो दिस इज योर टीचर आशा टीचर कमिंग विद द सेकंड लेक्चर ऑफ एटम्स ओके सो टेक योर पेन बुक एवरीथिंग वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड नाउ गेट रेडी टू स्टडी बो एटम मॉर्निंग ओके सो ए वार्म वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ माय स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट बोस एटम मॉडल in the previous class we have discussed the root of fools atom model okay but there were certain drawbacks in root of fools atom model he had conducted a, a established example experiment called as the alpha scattering experiment okay even though it would not explain root of fools nuclear model of atom could not explain the stability of atom and also the discrete spectrum of atoms is not ex explained by Through the four such a model, okay. So, after studying through the four nuclear model of atom in detail, that model itself Bohr also taken through the four nuclear model of atom, and after studying that model in detail, what happens? Our Bohr, okay, our Bohr modified nuclear model of atom. Bohr modified nuclear model of atom. What was uh, Rutherford's nuclear model of atom? In Rutherford's nuclear model of atom, from the alpha scattering experiment, he proved that most of the space inside the atom is empty. Most of the space inside the atom is empty. Okay, and uh, there is a very small. Most of the space inside the atom is empty. but there is a very small positively charged heavily dense central region called as the nucleus okay and electrons are revolving around this nucleus like this electrons are revolving around this nucleus through any given region through any circular orbit okay okay that was the postulates of rutherford's atom model after studying that postulates in detail Bohr also understood that yes, as said by Rutherford's atom model, the electrostatic force of attraction between the nucleus and electron, the electrostatic force of attraction between the nucleus and electron gets converted to the centripetal force. Yes, it is correct. As Rutherford thought, the centripetal force is provided by the centripetal force for the revolving electrons is provided by the electrostatic force of attraction between the nucleus and the electron. Yes, but even though the electrons get centripetal force, they do not orbit through any circular region, any region around the nucleus. that was the first postulate of bohr's atom model the first postulate of bohr's atom model is that the electrons will revolve the electrons will revolve only through only through those orbits those orbits which have a speciality whose angular momentum whose angular momentum momentum will be an integral multiple of integral multiple of h by 2 pi that was the suggestion provided by bohr yes electrons will revolve around the nucleus but electrons will revolve only through those orbits those circular path where the angular momentum is an integral multiple of h by 2 pi so what is this angular momentum in order to understand that concept of angular momentum we will take a nucleus and one of the revolving electron okay suppose the electron is revolving like this this is the direction of velocity vector and this is the position vector okay the di the direction of velocity vector and position vector will be all days perpendicular to each other so in our plus one topic we have studied angular momentum is the cross product of position vector and momentum okay mass into velocity in the same direction of velocity 
So L is equal to R P sin theta. Or we can write L is equal to R mass into velocity and sin theta is 1. Sin 90 here theta is 90 degree. So sin 90 is 1. So M V R. That is the angular momentum is an integral multiple of h by 2 pi. N h by 2 pi. L is equal to N h by 2 pi. Where N is equal to 1, 2, 3 and so on. Clear? Or we can write MVR is equal to NH by 2 pi. Clear? The electrons will revolve only through those orbits whose Yes, who said that the electrons are revolving around the nucleus? Surely it is Rutherford. He suggested that the centripetal force for the revolving electron is provided by the electrostatic force of attraction between them. But, sorry, can't fall down. Okay, but the electrons will revolve only through those orbits whose angular momentum is an integral multiple of h by 2 pi. Here, L is equal to n h by 2 pi. MBR is equal to NH by 2 pi. Clear? Okay. Good. And what is the speciality of such orbits? The speciality of such orbits is that in such orbits, in such orbits, they do not lose their energy. They do not lose their energy. Okay. And hence such orbits we are called as such orbits we are called as stationary energy levels. Stationary energy levels. So what is the speciality of such orbits whose angular momentum is an integral multiple of h by 2 pi? For such orbits they never lose their energy. And such orbits we are called as stationary. That is stationary means the energy is constant at that orbit. Okay. And hence the first drawback of Rutherford's atom model is overcome. How Rutherford's atom model, according to the Rutherford's atom model, the electrons revolving around the nucleus, since they are accelerated charged particle as suggested by Maxwell's electromagnetic theory, they lose their energy during each revolution and the radius of the circular path decreases and finally comes to inside uh, finally falls inside the nucleus okay but it doesn't happen because the electrons will never lose their energy because they are in such orbits whose angular momentum is an integral multiple of h by 2 pi okay such orbits never lose their energy that's why electrons will not fall into the nucleus of the atom and the electrons and the atom as a whole remains stationary stable not stationary stable for a long period okay so the first drawback must overcome from here clear the energy of electron is equal to the energy of the orbit okay and the third postulate was that we will write here Electrons in ground state, electrons in ground state, when get some energy from external means, when get some energy, when get some energy, what happens? They become excited. When energy increases, they become excited. Okay. And it jumps to higher and it jumps to higher energy levels higher energy levels okay so what happens to the electrons in the ground state ground state means it's a normal energy level what happens when these electrons get some energy they become excited and these excited electrons jumps to the higher energy levels okay to the higher values of n but the higher energy levels are highly unstable. Since the higher energy levels are, since the higher energy levels are highly unstable, highly unstable, what happens? They jumps back to the lower energy level. They jumps back 
to the lower energy level. But during pro this process, some energy is lost, the absorbed energy is lost. They jumps back to the lower energy level by emitting the absorbed energy, absorbed energy as electromagnetic radiations. And these electromagnetic radiations results in the discrete spectrum, spectrum, sorry, spectrum of atoms. Can you see the board clearly? These electromagnetic radiations result in the discrete spectrum a little bit, no problem, okay. Discrete spectrum of atoms, okay. That was the second drawback of Rutherford's atom model. Rutherford's atom model couldn't explain the line spectrum of atom. Okay, here Bohr, Bohr's atom model can explain the line spectrum, which we have to discuss in detail. Okay, so what happens during this discrete spectrum of atom? Electrons in the ground state gets excited by absorbing the energy. Okay. They become excited and jumps to the higher energy level and since the higher energy levels are highly unstable, they jumps back to the lower energy level by emitting the absorbed energy as electromagnetic radiations and these electromagnetic radiations will result in the discrete spectrum of atoms. Okay, and here we can use the equation that energy emitted is equal to energy of higher level, N2 level minus energy of smaller level or we can write hc by lambda is equal to energy of can you see clearly it one minute sorry one second okay no problem we can write like this hc by lambda is equal to delta s yes, electromagnetic radiations en2 energy of higher level minus e energy of the lower level Okay, so these were the important postulates made by Bohr's atom model. So what are the important postulates? Bohr had taken Rutherford's nuclear model of atom itself, but by studying it in detail, he understood that the necessary centripetal force, as Rutherford said, the necessary centripetal force is provided by, necessary centripetal force for the revolving electrons is provided by the electrostatic force itself. Yes, it is clear. But it doesn't mean that the electrons obtaining this necessary centripetal force can revolve through any path surrounding the nucleus. No, 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 no. The electrons will revolve only through those paths, only through those orbits whose angular momentum will be an integral multiple of h by 2 pi. L is equal to n h by 2 pi. L is n v r. n v r is equal to n h by 2 pi. N value starting from 1, 2, 3 to any higher up to infinity that is said okay and what is the speciality of such orbits such orbits do not lose their energy they never lose their energy and such orbits becomes stationary energy levels that is Bohr's atom model can explain the stability of atom and moreover the electrons in their ground state in their normal state when get sufficient energy becomes excited and jumps to the higher energy level since the higher energy levels are highly unstable, they jumps back to the lower energy level by emitting the absorbed energy as electromagnetic radiations. And these electromagnetic radiations results in the discrete spectrum, line spectrum of atom. Okay. And that uh, energy of the electromagnetic radiations emitted is taken as energy of the higher level minus energy of the lower level. And since this energy is obtained as electromagnetic radiations, we can write delta E as Hc by lambda. Hc by lambda is equal to En2 minus En1. Clear? And by considering this much thing, Bohr was able to explain every, every property of each and every quantity related to that of the revolving electron. By considering this, he could explain what is the speed of the revolving electron. He could explain the radius of the revolving electron, the radius of the orbit through which the electrons are revolving and also the energy of the revolving electron. Okay. 
So, hoping you have taken the knot. Sorry, I have rubbed it. Please go backward and take the knot. Okay. So, by considering the concept of bore, these concepts. At first, from Rutherford's, from Rutherford's model. Centripetal force is taken as electrostatic force. We get this equation. That is centripetal force mv square by r is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 electrostatic force q1 q2. q1 is electron and q2 is nucleus. Nucleus contains z times protonic charge. This is electron, revolving electron and this is the charge of the nucleus. Nucleus contains Z times proton. The charge of proton is same as that of electron. So, Z e by R square. This is the first equation that they had taken, Bohr had taken. Then, from his own model, Bohr's at a model. What? Angular momentum is an integral multiple of h by 2 pi. That is mvr is equal to nh by 2 pi. Considering these two equations, considering these two equations, Bohr was able to find the speed. One, the speed of orbiting electron, the radius of the orbit of the electron, and the total energy, the total energy of electron including kinetic and potential energy. Okay, so by considering these two important statements, that is the necessary electrostatic forces, for electrostatic forces, sorry, the necessary centripetal forces provided by the electrostatic force of attraction between the nucleus and the electron and from Bohr's concept itself, the angular momentum of the orbit is equal to nh by 2 pi, he was able to find the speed of electron, the radius of electron, and total energy of electron. Okay, so we are going to take the equations one by one. Okay, by considering the first and second equations, we are going to take, as Bohr had taken, we are going to take the speed of orbiting electron. To get the speed of orbiting electron, take equation one by we have to take equation 1 by 2. And equation 1 by 2 means mv square by r divided by mvr is equal to 1 by 4 by epsilon 0 z e square by r square divided by nh by 2 pi. Okay. Taking this, we can write mv square by r, then mvr is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 is the d square by r square into reciprocal 2 pi by nh. Okay. Canceling m. We can cancel. Okay. Canceling m. 1 of the v. r and r. r square. r square. Then 2 pi and 4 pi to be 2. Then we can write mv. Here is only v. V is equal to R and V R. Everything is cancelled. Here is that E square by is that E square by 2 epsilon 0 nh. So what is the equation for V? V becomes is that E square by 2 epsilon 0 nh. Clear. So this is the equation for the speed of the orbiting electron. The speed of the orbiting electron. Clear. Here, for any electron in any orbit of any atom in any element, we can write E square constant as the element changes, atomic number changes. 2 constant, F0, 0 constant, H constant. But as the number of orbit changes, M changes. We can write it as E square by 2, F0, 0, H into Z by N. And this value constant, we know the value of electronic charge, 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb. F0, 0, we know, we know 8.87 into 10 raised to minus 12 and H also 6.6 into 10 raised to minus 34. Putting that value, you will get 
2.18 into 10 raised to 6 is that by n. So we can write the velocity as 2.18 into 10 raised to 6 is that by n. Or comparing this value with the speed of light, we can write c by 137. c by 137 into z by n. Okay, so what I may be, the speed equation becomes e square by 2 epsilon 0 h into z by n. Okay, clear? For hydrogen atom, atomic number is 1. And since the n is also 1, only one electron is present, which is present in the first orbit. What will be the speed? 2.18 to 10 raised to 6. Clear? Okay. So, by considering 1 and 2, we will get the speed. Similarly, 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 similarly. Hoping you have returned. Sorry, I have rubbed again. Okay. We can go to the radius. The second one is radius of orbiting electron okay radius of orbiting electron for that please take 1 by 2 square 1 by 2 square put 1 by the square of the second equation m square v square r square here the whole square then taking m v square by r m square v square r square is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 is a d square by r square here every term in square n square h square 4 pi square okay now cancelling one mass is cancelled v square as such r square then one r is retaining 4 one of the pi is cancelled, nothing else. Now, what is here? 1 by, there is 1 r, there is 1 m. Is equal to, is a d square 1 pi by f0 0, 0 n square n square. Or now we can write radius of the orbiting electron r is equal to f0 0, 0 n square h square by z e square pi m correct r here z e square pi m downward or we can write here also the constant that is the equation for r becomes epsilon 0 h square n square by e square pi m into z that is the constants taking together epsilon 0 h square by e square pi m into n square by z that is r is proportional to n square by z taking the constants r becomes 0.529 putting the values and strum into n square by z and for hydrogen hydrogen atom n is 1 z is 1 r becomes 0.529 and strum and this radius is called as the Bohr radius. Clear? This radius is called as the Bohr radius. So, in order to get the radius, you have to take 1 by 2 square. Clear? Just go through the equations. It is very simple. Okay. So, now we are going to the energy of orbiting electron. Okay. We have taken the speed of orbiting electron, the radius of the orbiting electron, and now we are going to the energy. In energy, the first energy is kinetic energy. What is the equation for kinetic energy? Half m v square. Therefore, we can write kinetic energy is equal to half m. What is the equation for the speed of the orbiting electron? E square is z by 2 epsilon 0 h m. The whole square. The equation becomes kinetic energy m e square square e raised to 4 is z square by 2 into 2 4 4 into 2 8 8 epsilon 0 square n square h square so what is the equation for the kinetic energy kinetic energy becomes m e raised to 4 is z square 8 epsilon 0 square n square h square okay similarly 
what is the potential energy of orbiting electron what is the potential energy here the potential energy is between the charges nucleus and the electron charged bodies and in electrostatics we have studied the potential energy between the charged bodies as 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q1 q2 by r square do you remember not r square sorry q1 q2 by r sorry 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q1 q2 by r we have studied it in our electrostatics potential energy between the charged particle here one particle is electron and the other particle is the nucleus both of them are charged so potential energy becomes 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 first charged particle is electron always put the negative sign of the charged particle okay the second one is the nucleus nucleus means z times positive charge electron positive charge that is equivalent to electron by what is the equation for radius here it is epsilon 0 h square n square by e square pi m z okay now it becomes potential energy is equal to m at first negative minus okay potential energy is always negative minus m you may cancel pi z square e e e square e raised to 4 by 4 epsilon 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 0 square n square h square so what is the potential energy the potential energy becomes minus m z square e raised to 4 by 4 epsilon 0 square n square h square clear now taking the total energy total energy is always equal to kinetic plus potential we can take kinetic as m e raised to 4 e z square by 8 epsilon 0 square n square h square minus m e raised to 4 e z square by 4 epsilon 0 square n square h square or now we can write total energy as m e raised to 4 e z square common epsilon 0 square n square h square common 1 by 8 minus 1 by 4 this becomes 2 minus 1 1 by 8 isn't it yes total energy becomes minus m e raised to 4 z square by 8 epsilon 0 square n square it is square. Please try to calculate. It is very simple. Okay. So this is the equation for total energy. That is, we got the equations for kinetic energy, potential energy, and total energy. And on looking these energies, do you understand anything? Yes, we got kinetic energy, total energy. The magnitudes are same. M e raised to 4 is square by 8 epsilon 0 square n square h square. But one is negative and one is positive. That means, now, may I rub this portion? Yes, hoping you have taken this much. We will write kinetic energy and total energy are equal in modulus. But kinetic energy is always positive and total energy is always negative. Okay. Similarly, here for kinetic and total denominator 8, but here only 4. Okay. Into 2. Will you will get 8. That means taking potential energy by 2, by 2, by 2, 4 into 2 becomes 8. Then you will get total energy. But potential energy is also negative. So on comparison, we can write kinetic energy is equal to minus total energy is equal to minus potential energy by 2. Both kinetic and total will have the same magnitude, but kinetic is always positive, total is always negative. Here, potential energy by 2 will be total and kinetic, but potential energy is also negative. Okay, take the knots. So, this is the equation for total energy. As earlier, putting the constants together, m e raised to 4 is the changes with element 8 epsilon 0 square, n square changes with the number of orbit h square 
taking this constant together and taking the value in electron volt, we will get the value as minus 13.6 electron volt into Z square by N square important. The total energy may be taken as minus 13.6 electron volt into Z square by N square. Okay, for hydrogen atom, Z1, one electron in the first orbit, N1. Then it becomes total energy minus 13.6 electron volt. When the electron in the ground state excited to the first atom, First excited state, that is the second level, what happens is that uh, is that is run again by 2 square 30 minus 13.6 electron volt by 2 square. Okay, that is for hydrogen atom. Hydrogen atom, if we take first energy level, that is N is equal to 1. E1 is equal to minus 13.6 electron volt. N is equal to 2. E2 becomes minus 13.6 electron volt. Z is again 1, but N becomes 2. 2 square by 4, it becomes minus 3.4 electron volt. N is equal to 3. E3 is equal to minus 13.6 electron volt by 3 square, that is 9, minus 1.51 electron volt. If N is equal to 4, if N is equal to 4, E4 is equal to minus 13.6 electron volt by 4 square 16 minus 0.85 electron volt. Okay, and so on. And so on. You can take any value of energy. And finally, 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 if take N is equal to 5, E5 is equal to minus 13.6 electron volt by 5 square which is equal to minus again, it decreases 0.57 electron volt and so on. And finally, 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 when n is equal to infinity, n is infinity, total energy becomes zero. Okay, energy at infinity becomes zero, that is. Okay, so we understood the energy levels of the first orbit, second orbit, third orbit, there is a definite amount of energy. And now we have drawn a figure which shows this energy. If n is equal to 1, energy is minus 13.6 electron volt. If n is equal to 2, energy becomes minus 13.6 by 2 square minus 3.4 electron volt. If n is equal to 3, E3 becomes minus 13.6 electron volt by 3 square minus 1.5 electron volt. Then n is equal to 4 minus 0.85 electron volt. n is equal to 5 minus 0.27 electron volt and so on. Okay. From this energy diagram, what do you understood? You can see, as the number of orbits increases, n increases, the energy difference between them decreases. First orbit has an energy of minus 13.6 electron volt. We are talking about hydrogen. If there is another atom, you have to take minus 13.6 electron volt into Z square by N square. Put Z square by N square also. Since Bohr had talked about the hydrogen atom, we are taking that. Okay. So, when we move from first orbit to second orbit, the energy gets converted from minus 13.6 electron volt to minus 3.4 electron volt. So, what is the energy difference? What is the difference between these two values? 10.2 electron volt. So it means that when electrons in the ground state of hydrogen atom, that is the first orbit of hydrogen atom, get 10.2 electron volt of energy. Only when the electrons in the ground state get this much of energy, they can jump into the second orbit. If the energy from the external means is less than 10.2 electron volt, it will try to move to the higher orbit, but it will retain in first itself because in order to move to the second orbit, it requires at least 10.2 electron volt. Okay. Okay. And this energy required for an electron in one orbit to move to the other orbits, higher orbits, is called as excitation energy. So what is excitation energy? The energy required for the electrons in the ground state 
to excite to higher energy levels. The energy required by the electrons in the ground state. Ground state to excite to higher energy states. Higher, higher energy levels. Okay, from ground level to higher energy level. So for hydrogen atom, minimum excitation energy is 10.2 electron volt. Why? For exciting to the next orbit, second orbit, it recurs. So for hydrogen atom, for hydrogen atom, the first excitation energy or the minimum excitation energy is first excitation, we will write it as E. Excitation energy is 10.2 electron volt. The minimum, first means the minimum excitation energy is 1 point, sorry, 10.2 electron volt. That is from N1 is equal to 1, 2, N2 is equal to 2. For second excitation, that means this is the ground level, ground state. This is the first excitation, first excitation state. Oof. Excitation state. So this will be the second excitation state. Third orbit becomes the second excitation state. What is ES? Excitation state. For second excitation, the, and the electron in the ground state must recur 10.2 electron volt to plus 1.9 electron volt. For second excitation energy is 10.2 electron volt to plus 1.9 electron volt 11 to 1 that is 12.1 electron volt is required okay for next third excitation that is the fourth orbit 10.2 plus 1.9 plus 0.65 and as as increasing 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 what happens as the number of orbit increases the difference that decreases the energy required decreases 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 and finally when the energy becomes the starting energy was minus 13.6 electron volt when this 10.2, which is the minimum excitation energy, 10.2 electron volt increases, 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 so that the total energy becomes zero. We have to provide some what? Plus 13.6 electron volt. So that minus 13.6 electron volt of energy gets converted to zero. And this energy which is required to, required to not excite, to leave out from the atom is called as ionization energy. What was ionization energy in your chemistry? The minimum amount of energy required for an electron in the most loosely bonded valence shell. Okay, most loosely bonded electron to move away from it is called as ionization energy. So this is the excitation energy, minimum excitation energy and this excitation energy increases, increases, increases and finally when it reaches up to plus 13.6 electron volt, what happens? The energy of the electron becomes zero and it, gets, it ionizes from the atom and that energy is called as that it goes out from the atom. That state is called as ionization and the energy is called as ionization energy. So, in order to excite, it recurs an electron in hydrogen atom recurs at least 10.2 electron volt. This is the minimum excitation energy. And when the energy increases to 13.6 electron volt, the not excitation, only ionization takes place. That means for excitation, the energy required is in between 10.2 electron volt and 13.6, below 13.6 electron volt. Okay understood so today we are taking this much of topic and in the next class we will continue our that our topic by considering this energy level itself that is by providing energy to the hydrogen atom in a cylinder
okay hydrogen atoms tremendous millions of hydrogen atoms which are present in a cylinder cylinder we provide excitation energy that is energy between 10.2 electron volt and 13.6 electron volt what happens each electron in each atom gets excited and we jumps to the higher energy levels various energy levels ranging up to infinity okay so what happens and it ranges from one to infinity so what happens the higher energy levels are highly unstable they jumps back to the lower energy level and during jumping when it jumps from 5 to 4 the amount of energy emitted and when it jumps to 5 to 2 the amount of energy emitted whether it becomes c when it jumps to 3 to 1 and 2 to 1 whether the amount of energy emitted by the radiation same no which leads to the discrete spectrum of atoms which we will discuss in the next lecture okay clear so today we are writing this topic here okay and we were discussing the Bose atom model in detail. We have discussed the equation for V, important both states of Bose atom model, V, radius, energy, excitation energy, energy diagram, and so on. Okay. So hoping you understood the topic till now. Very clearly, very clearly. Okay. Study well, stay well. If there is any doubt, please ask it in the comment box. And in the next class, we will go to the hydrogen spectrum. That is a discrete spectrum of atoms especially hydrogen spectrum okay then see you in the next class